In recent years, fast technological advances have made it possible for regulatory bodies and non-governmental organizations to employ a great number of technologies in the monitoring and enforcement of environmental law. Here are three examples of how different types of technologies are helping people every day in the fight against environmental crime. Our first stop is in Ireland, where the Environmental Protection Agency has developed an innovative way to increase citizen participation in this process. NICE was set up in 2004 in response to an ECJ case taken against Ireland and that highlighted a multiple and systematic failure in implementing the Waste Framework Directive. So as a country we needed to be better organised to combat illegal waste activities and we needed to be able to work across the country and also across many organisations in order to make a difference. So one of the things we've developed is a phone app and we call it See It Say It. So you can use it if you're out in the country to actually report an environmental uh, incident. And the way you do that is you take a picture of the incident with your mobile phone and the phone will automatically record your location. From that uh, it can send it directly to the computer system of the organisation that needs to follow up on it. After that, the uh, waste enforcement officer, if it's a waste incident, uh, will investigate. They will come to the site, uh, they will look through the, the dump to see if they can find any evidence of who was actually involved in it. And if they do, they will take that person to court. They will also liaise with their clean-up crew and organise them to come and bring a truck and clean away the waste, leaving the, the site back the way it was. On an annual basis, about 2,000 people are downloading the app and using it to report environmental issues. And that covers things like uh, air, noise, nuisance, water quality and waste. And the waste can be anything from a piece of litter to an abandoned car to a larger dump. And the majority of things are in the litter area. It's so easy to be able to engage using the app and it's, it really has come on from using a phone or using a letter which was the old way of doing it. So it empowers people to engage and to help protect the environment that they live in. One can't talk about new technologies without mentioning drones. And of course, drones are being used every day by citizens and community groups. For example, Andrea Berardi's EcoDrones project in London monitors sites where intentional degradation of the environment is taking place. We use drones to monitor issues like the destruction of natural habitats and fly tipping, mostly by developers. So before drones came into play, in the community we rely on people witnessing fly tipping or destruction However, there was a big issue there, is that it was usually your word against somebody else's word and also trespassing, that you wouldn't be able to get onto private land in order to actually witness close hand what was going on. Now, with the advent of drones, we've been able to get reliable evidence that you can take into court and take to decision makers, here's a video, here are some photographs of the environmental destruction. A great example of where the use of a drone has led to a successful prosecution is right here in Blackness Park. Um, a developer bought up a, a site and with the idea of degrading it so that it could get planning permission. If you destroy the ecology, then it's easier to build, right? We couldn't go in the site. So we used the drone to fly in and take video and photographs of illegal dumping of waste, leaking radiators, leaking fridges, paint that was leaching into the environment, uh, poisoning the species there. We took this video, showed it to decision makers, and within 24 hours a notice was issued for the removal of this illegal waste and uh, the site was cleared. Up to now, communities have felt helpless. So through the use of these technologies, communities can very easily gather evidence and that makes them feel as if they have the capacity to do something about degradation of their environment. It's a new source of information and information is power. 
GPS technologies and satellite images are one of the most ubiquitous technological advancements of the last decade and something that we can all access with just a tap of the finger. These incredible databases of information allow organisations such as the Committee Against Bird Slaughter to monitor large areas across Europe for bird trapping, a practice that has been illegal in all European member states since 1979, but that unfortunately still leads to the death of 25 million birds a year. CAPS is the Committee Against Bird Slaughter and we work against uh, bird trapping in the Mediterranean. So when we start a new uh, campaign in areas which are not familiar with, we use normally satellite images in order to get the upper end on trappers who know this area much better than us. At the beginning we were just using our memory, uh, there was no database, so we would just work spontaneously relying on our skills of moving in the terrain. So you see only what you can see, but if there is a house or a barrier you cannot get beyond it. But as soon as you get satellite images you can cover the whole area and have a 100% control over the territory. Satellite images have changed the way we work. They were really important both for security reasons since you can understand where the trappers come to a dangerous place and how you can hide or find a, f a fast escape route in case they come and both for uh, locating, reporting and mapping these trapping sites. For instance, thanks to the use of Google Earth in southeastern Spain, you can see the, these huge installations from, from the sky and it's very easy to detect, locate and report all these trapping sites. This is one of them. You see the pinnacles, the prune trees, and then moving around, you find more of them. Uh, this is another one. You can see the prune trees, another trapping site. So you can have the control over the whole situation in a short time. I can also show you an example from Cyprus where uh, we located a trapping site and we had the first uh, successful uh, ambush and prosecution with the police. And so this is the trapping site. And we could show the policemen where we believe that the trapper would uh, arrived from using this road where they could uh, hide the cars in order not to be spotted before the, the, their arrest and actually it worked. New technologies are proving increasingly useful in reducing monitoring costs, increasing safety for inspectors and allowing communities to gather evidence. However, such techniques cannot yet replace traditional enforcement and surveillance by statutory bodies. They should instead be seen as tools for the benefit of an already existing network of enforcement agencies and also for citizens interested in helping to protect their environment.